Welcome. In this video, we're going to do a walkthrough uh, first reconnaissance for Mage Knight, the board game. So I've already got the board set up. If you want to see how we got to this point, please check out my setup video. So we'll go ahead and proceed. Just taking a look at the scenario real quick. So a player will score one fame whenever they reveal a new tile, no matter which type. So when we expand our map, uh, no player versus player combat, especially if we're playing solo. Uh, for the first game, there should be at least one unit in the offer with the village icon. We have two with the village icon down here. And elite units are not used for this scenario, and you should not reveal spells and advanced action cards until they are needed for the first time. And I felt like I needed to reveal them, so I knew how to set my board up. Uh, basically, they tell you not to reveal them so you don't have to explain them until you need to. And then our scenario will end when a player reveals the city which is going to be at the bottom three tiles of this stack. And then with the solo variant, we will be playing two days and two nights. So the basics of this game is it's going to go over several rounds. Each day and night is a different round. So we're going to have four rounds, two in the day, two in the night. During each round, we're going to play cards moving on the map and we'll take turns until we go through our deck. And the dummy player, Goldix in this game, it's just a timer so that we can't take our time going through this. So there's little pressure to move, but probably not much. So the first thing we need to do is pick a tactic for the day. So the earlier the number, that is going to be our initiative in the turn order, uh, which is not really a huge factor there. So in solo, we get to pick our first tactic, and I'm just going to go with a great start. So when you take this tactic, immediately draw two cards. So we'll take those and add it to our hand. Then Goldix will randomly take one. So he's got Mana Steel, so he'll be going first since his lower is number. We've already got this adjusted to fit that. And these will be removed from the remainder of the game. And since Goldix gets to go first for the dummy turn, all they do is discard the top three cards. And if the top card matches one of the colors in their inventory. We'll reveal one more card for each token or crystal that matches that. Since that came out as white, no more cards will be discarded. So that's just a timer for us. Then we'll take a look at what we can do. Uh, so we do have a ranged attack three, which would be enough to take care of that guy. So then it's just a matter of, can we get to that position? So for movement during the day, our planes are going to cost us two, and the forest costs us three each. And also, if we explore, that's costing another two movement. So on our turn, we do movement, then an action. And those actions are typically going to be fighting or interacting with a location. So we're going to play this as normal for March. Move two. We don't have any green to boost that with. But what we can do is we can play cards sideways to give, a, to give us plus one move, attack, defense, or influence. So that's going to give us a total of five and six, seven movement. So one, two, three, four, and seven. Then we're going to go ahead and initiate combat on this guy here. So he's got a defense of three, does attack of four, and if we win, we'll get two fame. So there's four phases to combat. So there is a range and siege attack phase. So if we can defeat the enemy during this, we will. that's going to be it. We don't go to the next. But if we don't, there's a block phase, which we'll have to defend against that four. And then if we don't defend against that four, we assign damage, which is never good. But then after that, we go back to our attack phase, to which we'll assign more damage. Except during the range and siege attack, we're going to come in with swiftness, boost that with a white mana die to make it range attack three, and just go ahead and defeat him right there. So we'll place him down here to remember. We're going to go ahead and end our turn. So we will reroll any mana dice used. So that comes back as another white. We'll clear up our play area. All these go to the discard pile. Can use the benefits of the space. 
So we are in a Magical Glade. So Healing Essence, if you end your turn on a Magical Glade, you can throw away one wound card from your hand or discard pile. Not the same as healing. And it's imbued with magic. So if you start your turn on a Magical Glade during the day, you gain a gold mana token. Start your turn on a Magical Glade during the night, you gain a black mana token. Then we'll get the rewards from combat. And for the Marauding Orcs, if you defeat the Orcs, discard their token and gain one reputation. So we'll move that up on the reputation track. And of course, we've got two fame for defeating it. And then this just gets discarded. And if we could, we'd level up. Now we'll just draw new cards. We do have the option of discarding this, but I think I'm just going to keep it. And we'll draw four more cards, getting Swiftness, Cold Toughness, Stamina, and a Rage. Then Goldix is going to go, discarding three cards. Ending in blue, we have one blue token here, so we discard one more. Then back to us, and since we're at the Magical Glade, we start our turn with a Gold Mana token. We'll see what happens here. We're going to use Stamina, boost that with our gold. So we've got a movement of four. So one, two, three, four to explore. And we are going to position this so that the numbers align with the other numbers and letters. And so we've got another village, crystal mines, and a keep. And that's going to go right here. Then for the keep, when revealed, place a gray enemy token down on this face. We'll take the top there. Then we're going to take this to gain a blue, white, or red mana token. So we're done with our movement. And I think I'm going to take a red token for us. Then initiate an attack on this guy. So as far as the Ranged and Siege attack, we do not have enough to do that, so we'll go to our attack. So this guy's going to summon one from that type of token. And we're just going to look that for the attack value, which is going to be 6. And it also has Paralysis, so we definitely do not want to take damage from that. So if we were to take damage from that... Now, if a unit gets wounded because of an attack from an enemy with Paralyzed, it is immediately destroyed or removed from the game. If a hero takes one or more wounds into their hand from a Paralyzing attack, they must immediately discard any non-wound cards from their hand. So we want to defend that six. So what we're going to do is boost this to give us an Ice Block five. So we get plus one Ice Block for each ability or color of attack depicted on the enemy token. So we're boosting that from the source. You see here, plus one for each ability or color of attack. So that's definitely an ability. The Paralyze gives us plus one. But just in case I'm interpreting that wrong, we'll boost that up to a plus one block. So we take care of that. Then this will be discarded. It's just used for the attack and assigning damage. Then we go in for our attack, so we need a four. We have Rage in hand, and we've got a red token, so we can boost that up to an attack four and defeat that monster. So I guess first when I explored here, I would have moved up one on the fame. And then here, since we've defeated one of this, we get a reward. Our reputation is now up to a plus one, and we get four. So we're going up to one, two, three, four, up to seven. And we'll go ahead and discard this. Remove these tokens. Reroll our mana die. Now get a green. Discard all these. And we level up. So for leveling up, it alternates, we either get a command token or we get an advanced action card and a skill. So for our skills, we'll just take the top two, take a look at those, and then grab our description here. 
So we've got, I feel no pain. Once a turn, except in combat, discard one wound from hand if you do draw a card. Or we've got Shield Mastery. Uh, once a turn, block three, or ice block two, or fire block two. I think I'll take that one, so we'll add that next to our sheet. So we can do that once a turn. This goes to the common area, but since it's one of ours, we can no longer purchase it. But we do take the top one from our dummy player, or Goldix, and that will go into the common area, and we can potentially get that next round if we want it. So it's a freezing power, once a turn, siege attack one, or ice siege attack one. Then we get advanced action card that will go on top of our deed deck, so we'll be drawn into this shortly. So we've got a swift bolt, uh, gain a white crystal to your inventory, or boost it for a range attack four. Timidate, influence four or attack three, but we lose a reputation. And boost it into an influence eight, or influence eight or attack seven, but we lose two reputation. Then pathfinding, move two. The move cost of all terrains is reduced by one to a minimum of two this turn. We're boosted to a move four. The move cost of all terrains is reduced to two this turn. And I think I'm gonna go with the swift bolt. So that will go on top of our D deck. These will stay out and we will replenish with a fire bolt. So gain a red crystal to your inventory and boost it for a ranged fire attack three. So then we will draw our five cards, which will include the one we just put on top. So we also have Threaten, Rage, Crystallize, Stamina, and our new Swift Bolt. Then Goldix takes a turn. So one, two, three, red, doesn't trigger anything else. And I think for this turn, I'm just gonna go get us a unit to command. So we'll play Stamina for a move two. So we're at a village, so we can recruit units with the village icon, which means from our supply, we can recruit these two. This guy, we need to be at a different location. So we've got peasants, cost of four, Armor of three, they can attack or block two, or provide two influence, or give us a move two, and the foresters give us a move two. The move cost of forest hills and swamps is reduced by one this turn to a minimum of zero, or we can use it for a block three. And I'm just gonna bring in and threaten these guys to bring them into our crew using a red mana die. So we're influence five, but we lose one on reputation. And I think we're gonna underbuy, just get the peasants, because they have a boost to the attack, and we should be looking pretty good for defense. So we add those under our command token. So it's just a quick move. We've done an action. So we are done with our turn. So we'll reroll this, getting a gold, which we can spend during the day as any one of the four basic colors, but at night, it's just depleted and useless. We'll discard those two, and then draw just one more card, because we're going through our deck pretty quickly here. So Goldix, one, two, three. Green, he's gonna discard two more cards. And then it's back to us. And I just wanna get next to this so we can see what it is before we get to nighttime. But if we end here, we can also do some exploring. So I'm gonna march and boost that with the green. To go one, two, three, four. We we'll also get to flip this to see what it is. So that symbol there means it's swift. To block this enemy, you need twice as much block as its attack value. So we're gonna spin these two sideways for two movement and explore here. So we've got a mage tower, some rampaging enemies or orcs in another village. And that will pop in just like so. So 
here's the orcs coming in. And the mage tower works just like the keep, a uh, place of, except we put a violet enemy, violet enemy token face down on its base. And it's revealed during the day if a player is adjacent to it. So that got us one fame. So we go, we will be leveling up. Since we're about to ready our allies, we'll go ahead and use them for move two so we can explore this area. And here, we've got a monastery and more orcs. So one more fame. Our orcs coming out, some more poison units. And then the monastery, so we can recruit units with that symbol. Uh, you can buy one point of healing for two influence here. When a monastery is revealed, put the top card of the advanced action deck face up in the units offer. Uh, advanced actions in the units offer can be bought at a monastery for six influence. And then if we're there, we can burn a monastery. Or you can try to burn a monastery as your action. If you do, you get minus three reputation because the villagers really frown on that. Draw a random violent enemy token to fight. Your units cannot be used in this combat because they can't believe what you just did. Now, if you defeat that enemy, mark the space with a shield token and get an artifact as your reward. So basically you're burning down the monastery to steal some treasure. Whether you defeat the enemy or not, discard it afterwards. Next time a new token will be drawn. So the top card of our advanced actions is a frost bridge. So this goes into the Offer, which is going to be immediately uh, discarded here as we end the round. Then we'll play this to gain a white crystal to our inventory. We're going to end our turn, re-rolling the die, getting a green, discard everything. We have no cards to draw with, so our next turn is going to be declaring end of round. So I mean, in a solo player, we can go ahead and call it now, but if we were playing with other people, everyone else still gets to some play time. But we do get to level up. Okay, for this round of leveling up, we're gonna get another command token. So we'll take that off the top here. It's gonna go face down so we can put another unit under it. So our armor was two with a hand size of five. Now it's gonna to go to an armor of three with a hand size of five. Then for ending the round, we're gonna flip our day board tonight. Give our mana dice a roll. So we've got blue, red, and white. We're gonna create a new offer down here. So the units are gonna go underneath. Then we're gonna get three new ones coming out. So we've got some swordsmen, guardsmen, and herbalists. We're also gonna replace our advanced action. So that will go on the bottom. And the next one coming out is Agility. Then we'll refresh our Advanced Action Offer. So we're gonna take the lowest card and give that to uh, Goldix. So that's gonna go in his deck. Move these down, draw another one out. So we've got a refreshing walk. And something similar for the spells. This goes away, but that's gonna put a white crystal on Goldix's Inventory. Then this will go on the bottom. We'll move these down. And get a mana meltdown coming out. We'll refresh our units. Shuffle our D deck for us and our other player, Goldix. Go ahead and draw five cards. So we've got some Rage, Instinct, Swiftness, March, and Cold Toughness. And then choose our tactic card for the night. So we've got From the Dusk, A Long Night, Mana Search, Midnight Meditation, Preparation, and Sparing Power. I think what I'm gonna do is take Preparation. So when you take this tactic, search your deck for any one card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. And I think I'm looking for some 
Big defense. Or no, I'm not. I'm going to use an additional mana die from the source's turn, I think is the card I want. So I'll put that in my hand. Then Gold X will take one at random. So he's got a six. So we'll be going first this round. And these are removed from the game. All right, so the first thing we're going to do Play mana draw. You can use one additional mana die from the source's turn. We want to move into the hills at night, so that's going to cost us three movement points. So there's move two and move two. So jumping in here, picks a fight. So we are in the keep. Uh, so it can be assaulted and you get reputation negative one. Uh, the defending enemies are fortified, which means we can't use ranged attack. Uh, we need siege attack to do anything. So for phase one, we're not doing the siege to range, so it's going to attack us. That doubles its attack, so it's got a defense or a punch of eight coming at us. So we're going to use our blue mana die here to give us ice block five. Then block for six, seven, and use our peasants for eight, nine. Now we need to deal four damage. And since we can play more than one mana die from the source's turn, we'll come in with our instinct using a red for attack four. So we've defeated this. So that will get us three fame. We'll lose a reputation for going after the keep. We'll put one of our shield tokens on it because now it's our keep. And our special ability for our keep, you can recruit units with the keep icon here. If you end your turn on or adjacent to a keep you own, your hand limit is plus one, well, it's one higher for each keep you own. And we currently have two units that we can get from the keep. But first, we're going to end our turn. So we'll reroll our die. Getting two blues. Discard our cards. And we'll be drawing six cards. Getting Tranquility, Promise, Threaten, Stamina, March, and another Stamina. For Goldix, discarding three cards. Ending with a white, which is going to be one more card, and then back to us. We'll start by doing a movement of two for some exploration. So exploring here. We've got another mine and some orcs. And even at nighttime, they come out revealed. Then we're going to do some recruiting. So we're going to do a promise, boosting with the source, so four, and then threaten, five, six. We can choose from these, or with six, we can get a advanced action. But I think we're going to go with the swordsman, giving us attacker block three, or attacker block six, and the unit becomes wounded. Ending our turn, rolling the die, getting a green, discarding. I think we're going to need a big movement. I will go ahead and discard this, but we are drawing six cards again, so four more. Rage, Swift Bolt, Swiftness, and Crystallize. And for exploration, we went up one on the Fame track. Gold X will go, discarding three, plus one more. We're going to do some movement. We'll boost that. So we've got a movement four, and then five, six. So we'll move one, two, three, and spend two to explore. So we're getting one more fame. And over here, another monastery. 
and move some cards around. Watch the world shift. So with another monastery, get another advanced action in our offer. So a crushing bolt, gain a green crystal to your inventory or siege attack three. Another rampaging orc popping up. Then we're gonna play a swift bolt to gain a white crystal to our inventory. And for our action, pick a fight with this guy. So it's got a defense of three. We're going in with a ranged attack of three using one of our crystals. So our reputation's gonna go up one and we're gonna get two fame, which means we're gonna level up and we'll discard that. Ending our turn. So we'll do some cleanup here. Rolling the die, getting a green. Discarding down. We are still within one of our keep. So if we had enough cards, we'd draw plus one, but we're stuck with rage, crystallize, and concentration. Well, we are leveling up, so we will get one more card. And I think I'm gonna go for the fire bolt. Let's just gain a red crystal to our inventory and ranged fire attack. So that would have gone on top and we would have drawn into it. That shifts down and ice shield comes up. We also get a skill. So between these two, let's see, we've got double time. Uh, once a turn, move two during the day, move one at night. And the other is a cold swordsmanship. Once a turn, attack two or ice attack two. I think we'll go with that. That will go up to the shared skills and the one more coming in from Goldix is going to be the white crystal craft. Once around, flip this to gain one blue crystal to your inventory and one white mana token. The Goldix is going after we level up. So that's gonna get two more cards. And for ending my last turn, I'm kind of limited on movement. So I'm just gonna play the Firebolt to gain a red crystal to our inventory. And I'll play Crystallize, boosting it with blue mana to gain a crystal of any color to your inventory. And I think we're gonna go green on that one. And end our turn. Getting red, discarding down. Just two cards in hand. Goldix, one, two, three. Green will be two more, so we're both ending our turn on our next round. So I'm just gonna call end of round, discarding down. And shuffling. So we'll go into our second day. Getting white, blue, and red there. Creating a new offer, which is gonna get us three new units and two spells. So the two spells coming in. Song of Wind and a Heroic Tale. And the three units, Illusionist, Foresters, and some Crossbowmen. Goldix is gonna be able to intimidate us now. And Blood Rage comes out. Goldix is then gonna get a red crystal to his inventory. Shift these down, getting call to arms. Ready our units. 
Then we'll get a day tactic. I think I'm just gonna go with planning. The end of each turn, if you have at least two cards in your hand, before you draw, draw as if your hand limit is one higher. And then Goldix will be going last. So we've got our five cards. Swiftness, Tranquility, March, Concentration, and Stamina. We're gonna do some movement and boost stamina. So we've got total six movement. We'll go three here, spend two to explore, which gets us a fame, so we're up to 17. And we are exploring, finding another village, some orcs, and in this area, some ancient ruins. So when revealed, place a yellow token here face up if it's day, which it now is. Uh, while unconquered, you can enter the ancient ruins as your action for the turn. There will be either an altar there or enemies to fight. So first, the orcs. So we've got fortified there. Then our altar. We need to spend three red crystals or mana to get seven fame. Currently we have one in our inventory and one over there. So we'll go ahead and end our turn. Getting white. The end of our turn, if we have at least two cards, we have three in our hand, so our hand limit is six. So drawing three more cards, Rage, Mana Draw, and Crystallize to go with our Concentration, Tranquility, and Swiftness. Goldix takes a turn, discarding three. It's blue, which will be one more. We are gonna play Tranquility. So we can draw two cards. Then use these for move four. So one, two, and explore. And we found another ancient ruin and some draconum and a keep. So a keep, draconum, some big beasties there. And here we can fight these two monsters or two tokens to get an artifact. And we'll play Concentration to gain a blue, white, or red mana token. We're gonna to choose blue. Then use that to boost Crystallize to gain a crystal of any color to our inventory, which I think we'll use to get a blue. We'll gain the fame for exploring. And we'll go ahead and end our turn. So once again, we have three cards in hand, so we can draw three more. So we've got Rage, Mana, Draw, and Promise. We're drawing into a Swiftness, Stamina, and a Swift Bolt. Goldix will go, discarding three, getting red. So one more card. I'm gonna use our Stamina with a boost. So we've got to move four, move two, move three into the woods, two to explore, which is gonna get us another fame. And we found our city, so we've got one more turn left. We're getting Draconum and a keep. There's the dragon coming in. And we'll end our turn. Once again with planning. Let's see. Actually, we won't end our turn just yet. Well, yeah, we will. We like that ranged attack. We'll go ahead and discard that one. So three cards plus three more. Instinct, Threaten, and Cold Toughness. Goldix gets its final turn. And for our last turn, we're gonna pick a fight with the dragon. 
He's got a defense of nine. He's attacking twice with poison. And we'll get seven fame for defeating him. All right, so we're definitely not getting the uh, siege range attack off. It's coming at us with 10 attack. Nothing's been revealed yet, so we're going back. We can use an additional mana die from the source this turn, just in case. So we're going to use this guy for a block three, this guy for a block two, this for another block three. So we're up to eight, so 11 block. So we've taken care of his attack. Now we just need to deal nine damage to him. So we we'll use that with our crystal for four. Use instinct, the source for another four. And add in our swift bolt for another four. So with that defeated, we're gonna gain two reputation. So villagers like it when we take down dragons and we'll get seven fame, which will let us level up. So from 19 to 26, this was our last turn. Roll in there and some cleanup. We did level up. So we'll get another command token out here. This will be readied. Then it's just a matter of counting up any more fame we'll get. So this game is you do the scenarios and hopefully do better than you did last time. So we will gain two fame for each spell we have. And we didn't collect any and one fame for each advanced action card in our deck. So we have two advanced action cards in our deck. So we'll gain two there. And then we gain two fame for each artifact. We don't have any, and then one fame for every two crystals in our inventory, so nothing there for loot. Uh, greatest leader, each player scores fame equal to the total level, all their units, and wounded units are counted only as half. So we have a level one and level two units, so we'll gain three there. Then for the Greatest Conqueror, each player scores two fame for each shield token they have on a keep, mage, tower, or monastery. We have one out on the board, so that gets us another two. Then, of course, the Greatest Beating. Each player loses two fame for each wound card in their deck. So, fortunately, we didn't take wounds, so we will end this game with 33, unless I messed up somewhere. So, I am new to Mage Knight. If I made any mistakes, please let me know what I did. As always, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, so please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.